is Gary Himes, and this is my final project for the DAT program at AT Still University. The title of my presentation is Academic Performance and Grade Point Average. Some quick background regarding my project. Uh, I am a certified athletic trainer in the state of Pennsylvania, as well as a certified teacher. Uh, I've always worked at the high school level, so the importance of academic performance and extracurricular activities has always been something that's been important to me. Pennsylvania, like many other states, is under a budget crisis uh, where the uh, education funding has been cut drastically. Uh, unfortunately, in order for schools to be able to meet their budgetary concerns, they are cutting athletic teams. The cutting of athletic teams is in, is in a hope, then, of being able to hire more teachers in the area of standardized testing. Uh, I'll talk, discuss later in my presentation how that isn't always necessarily the best course of action. One way that school districts are per, or counteracting this uh, budget crunch is to institute a pay-to-play fee for their participants. Uh, that pay-to-play fee includes band, orchestra, uh, any extracurricular activity after school, including extracurricular athletics. The issue that comes into play is in areas with uh, lower socioeconomic status, this is actually decreasing athletic participation in, in young athletes because their families do not have the financial means to be able to pay that fee. So what are some things that affect academic performance? If we're looking at academic performance specifically in order, to ha uh, in order for the student to help retain more information, there are some positive things that affect academic performance. And one of those positive aspects is physical fitness. Um, physical activity is something that uh, can encompass something as easily as uh, participating in PE courses. Um, can be something as easy as exercising after school, playing outside with your friends, or participating in extracurricular athletics. The study by Hovland had, in 1990 showed that students that participated in recess, um, elementary kids that participated in recess, uh, even if recess cut down on their academic time, they were still able to perform at a high academic level compared to their uh, other classmates who had increased classroom time. So they found that the students were still able to reach high uh, levels of academic uh, excellence, um, even with decreased classroom time because their physical activity was, de was increased. Some negative things that affect uh, academic performance can be one, socioeconomic status. That this could be, uh, could cover a wide variety of things. Uh, this could cover uh, nutrition uh, as far as uh, if a student is eligible to be part of the uh, federal free and reduced meal program. If they are, there's a good chance maybe they're not getting the proper nutrition they need at home. Um, socioeconomic status could also uh, include but not be limited to um, the highest level of education for the parent, the, for family members in the household. Uh, so maybe there's not a strong emphasis on academics in the household. Uh, one other thing that socioeconomic status could lead to is technology availability, both lack of and too much of. Uh, the study by Barr Anderson showed that in 2000, studying students that had televisions in their room, they showed that those students had uh, lower academic performances than students that did not. If we take that to today's standards, uh, we could very easily associate the use of uh, cellular devices as far as um, smartphones into that. When we look at the other side of technology, uh, as far as technology availability goes, uh, it kind of plays in a little bit to the socioeconomic status uh, comment above, where the family just does not have the means of purchasing uh, either tech internet for the household, maybe a computer for the household, uh, or if they do, they don't really know what their uh, what their the device is capable of doing, so they really struggle with the technology that's in the household. Um, even teaching high school kids today. I do teach a lot of kids who come from lower socioeconomic s status households. And even in 2017, I have some st students who do not have internet in their house. Uh, so we're required to allow them to do everything uh, that they need to do in school for, that, uh, for a particular project. Now to my project. My, my research design was, was a survey methodology. So what I did was is I created a, uh, a survey to ask questions regarding grade that the student was in, the uh, range of their so uh, the range of their grade point average, so 90 to 100, uh, 81, uh, 80 to 89, 
70 to 79, 60 to 69, and then 59 and below um, is, is failing. The participants were students at the York County School of Technology, which is where I'm employed at. The instrumentation was a survey that was reviewed by three experts in the field. Uh, they gave me feedback on the, on the survey, and I was able to get that approved through their uh, recommendations. There were four total drafts of the survey. Um, one draft was as easy as adding a sport back in that was accidentally uh, missed in the initial thing, in the initial um, pulling out of the survey. The survey was piloted with uh, students from the graduating class from last year uh, and a couple of the students from this year's graduating class. So the uh, approximately 50 students did, sur uh, did pilot the survey for me and uh, we were able to then roll that out. All students at York County School of Technology are required to take an English class all four years. So um, I actually am in the English wing in the school district that I'm currently working in and I thought it would be best to discuss it with the English department and ask them for their help in uh, distributing the survey. The survey took approximately uh, 15 minutes of class time uh, and that class time, in that 15 minutes included the students getting their computer, turning them on, logging them in and taking the survey. The survey itself actually potentially only took approximately uh, five minutes to take. Once the surveys were, dist uh, were done, the, we used the Wilcoxon signed rank test as well as the Man Whitney U test to determine the significant, to help try to determine the significance of the findings. Uh, the total results out of the 12 English teachers in the department, six English teachers participated in the survey. 603 were completed, 588 were valid surveys completed by the students. The, we dis the, there were 15 that were not valid, either the student marked that they did participate in a school-sponsored extracurricular activity and did not put a sport, or they put in that they did not participate in a school-sponsored extracurricular activity and did put a sport. This chart shows the breakdown of how the surveys were answered based on grade point average. York County School of Technology uses a percentage to determine a student's grade point average, which you'll see in column one. Column two shows the breakdown, uh, the total number of students that answered, uh, that put them in the, the, that particular category for grade point average. The third column will show how many of those the percentage of students participate in extracurricular activities and the fourth column will show the number of students uh, that are not participants of extracurricular activities. Based on these numbers and running them through the data analysis it came back that the the results came back as non-significant at 0.895 and we know that uh, a p-value of 0.05 is determined to, to determines is used to determine significance and uh, we're obviously well over that. Uh, so we wanted to be, we needed to be under 0.05 to be determined to have these results show as a level of significance. I think that this table, though, does show us um, th that there are, even out of the 588 that we used, um, 2 to 1, a little more than 2 to 1, are not participants in extracurricular activities. Um, and a school of 1,700 really doesn't, that, that doesn't really bode well when less than a quarter of our students uh, total and oh, l less than one third of the students that participated in the survey are actually, are actual participants in extracurricular activities. When the results came back as non-significant, I had to dive back into the literature to figure out why could this have happened. So one of the things that I decided to focus on was um, technical vocational versus regular school education. And I found that a, a good majority of students that attend a technical or vocational school are coming there because they want that trade aspect. Unfortunately, the, the downside of that is there are a few students who then don't put as much emphasis on their regular education courses that they should. So what happens uh, at our school is we have a um, a population that encompasses 14 different school districts across the, the uh, York County and we offer 32 technical programs here in addition we also offer 
all the academic courses that a student would get at the regular school, which makes us very unique. We are only one of three comprehensive schools in the entire state of Pennsylvania. So we are offering 32 vocational programs as well as all the English, math, social studies, science, uh, health and physical education, as well as um, numerous uh, elective courses that our students are able to take. So students that come to a vocational school maybe uh, have a, uh, a parent who is in a vocational trade, such as maybe their father is a diesel mechanic, so they come here to get, um, you know, Work, learn how to make work learn how to work on diesel engines so that they're able to take over for the family business or um, maybe they their father owns an HVAC company or they want to become a CNA you know those are those are things that we're able to teach here at the te at the technical school that they might not necessarily get at a regular education school so that was one aspect I looked at another aspect that I looked at was nutrition uh, if you remember back to the beginning of the slide we discussed the free and reduced meal program through discussions with our school uh, our school administration come to find out that over 50 percent of our students uh, we do have a population of 1700 can, uh, are take advantage of the free or reduced meal program that we offer here at your county school of technology so when you compare that to some of the issues maybe they they are uh, not getting the proper nutrition they need at home um, maybe they're not getting the nutrients they need one of the studies that I found found by Donnelly showed that there was a significant impact on academic performance based on the severity of obesity of students, uh, which leads back to the lack of physical uh, physical activity that a, that a student may have. So th that's obviously, we're, we're looking at two ends of the spectrum there. We're looking at one, maybe the student's not getting enough nutrition, and two, maybe the student's not getting the proper nutrition, which all have a negative impact on their ability to function during the regular school day. The Donnelly study also showed that students that uh, have obesity do not uh, have the, um, the uh, attention span that uh, stu other students have. Their level of absenteeism is much higher than a regular edu than a student who um, is not considered on an obese level, and their just uh, general demeanor towards their classmates and their teachers are different, uh, which obviously. You know, us knowing that we need to have a, a fairly good relationship with our teacher, uh, and that kind of helps us with uh, with our schooling. The next back, back that, aspect that I look at was technology, and technology again from the Bar Anderson study showed two different things. One, it showed that um, either there is a lack of technology, or there's a lack of understanding of the technology that they have. So those students. Um, as I've stated previously, I have students in 2017 who do not have internet in their house. Um, I have students who have told me they don't have televisions in their home because of the third, the fourth point on this slide, which is socioeconomic status. 53% of our students have families that live at or below the poverty level in our school, which is obviously a huge uh, issue when it comes to being able to make sure that they are getting all the, the things that they need. I have numerous students who miss schools because they have to stay home and um, watch a younger sibling. Uh, and the socioeconomic status deals with the, the three points above, the, the lack of technology, but the potential lack of nutrition, and why they're here in a vocational school to begin with. Uh, these students um, have very little uh, support at home uh, when as far as when it goes to college, they have very little support with their high school education. Um, when you know, student teacher conferences, we're seeing the parents we don't need to see, not the parents we do need to see. Uh, you know, so that's that's an aspect of the socioeconomic status that we, that, uh, we needed to deal with as well that I looked at uh, in my project. Some future considerations. One, I would like to revamp my entire uh, survey and start to ask some more pertinent questions. One, um, which students are on the free and reduced meal program? Is there a correlation between being on the free and reduced meal program um, and those students that were in the lower spectrum of grades? Uh, the other thing I'd like to look at is Keystone graduation exam scores. Um, whether those students, um, what their scores were. Were they proficient? Were they advanced? Were they competent? Were they below basic? You know, so those are a couple things that uh, that could be examined down the road. Uh, highest level of education level in the family. 
uh, is obviously something that uh, we need to focus on because that's going to give us an indication of what the thought process is with these students who want to go to college. Or do they have the support system at home to support them if they want to go on to higher education? In-season versus out-of-season GPAs is something that's important also. Uh, being able to track, if we could potentially track a student throughout the, 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 this, the year and see, uh, because they are required to have their grade above a certain grade point average in-season, um, does that dictate, you know, and is there something we could do to change that, you know, versus with the out-of-season and in-season GPA? And this would all be done by expanding the current survey. Uh, the current survey only had five questions. It was a very minimalistic survey. Um, it could very well have been expanded to try to get us more in-depth, higher level questions and answers that we could really have used to focus on um, why are our scores coming back the way they are? You know, why were we not significant? Are there other factors um, that led us to believe uh, that led us to think that, you know, to show that the numbers were non significant. Um, were 603 completed surveys a good representation of the school? Um, if you remember back to the um, survey on results, um, a good number of our results came from the, uh, were in that middle to range course. Um, so, you know, the scores. So, you know, there are, there are a lot of things that could have been done and could be done in the future to really expand out, um, you know, even what we have currently, to be able to take this to the next level and really try to get some answers as far as what we're looking at as far as some issues with the um, why the numbers did come back as non-significant. Just like to take this last slide and thank Dr. McLeod uh, for her uh, unwavering guidance through this time, uh, getting this project done, a, a lot of sleepless nights as I'm sure some of you uh, have experienced or will experience here as you come to the culmination of your project. Um, her, her guidance and wisdom in research is second to none and I feel uh, that my project is, this is just the beginning, I've just scratched the surface of what I'm able to do and I'm able to do that with her guidance. I'd like to thank the administration of York County School of Technology for their support throughout this their uh, uh, willingness to allow me to conduct this survey uh, and do this research um, will only benefit them in the future. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my wife Marie and my three kids uh, for their unwavering love and guidance throughout this process. Uh, I would never have gotten this far if, without for the, the, the four of them and I just think that it's uh, it's important that I take the take a second or two to, th to thank them as well. Uh, I'd like to wish um, all the remaining DAT students, the best of luck as you move forward on your projects, and I look forward to watching them over the coming years um, as uh, this cohort of uh, DAT students continues to grow in hopes of changing the profession of athletic training for the better. Thank you.